You may have already heard the story of the Nazi physician Joseph Mengele. Now, Mengele was a doctor in Auschwitz, but he didn't help people. In fact, of all the awful figures in Nazi Germany, Mengele was one of the worst. He did horrible things to people, including injecting methyl blue into the eyes of babies to try and change their eye color, ripping the skin off babies and sewing them together to create Siamese twins, and even sending the eyeballs of his victims to his mentors in Germany. Now, if the description of those awful things made you feel uncomfortable, that's perfectly normal. A negative reaction to negative stimuli is a normal sociological response. But what's interesting about Mengele is how exceedingly comfortable he was with his actions. In fact, he used to show up at the camps on his days off just to make sure everyone was doing the job properly. Mengele was a serial killer, but he was also a perfect example of a psychopath, a psychological condition that affects up to 1% of the human population. So what's the difference between a psychopath and a serial killer? Being a psychopath is a psychological condition and it's marked by things like callousness, impulsiveness and an inability to feel remorse or guilt for our actions. Now, not all psychopaths turn out to be bad people. Some have argued that Taylor Swift is a perfect example of a psychopath because she's very charming, very good at manipulating others and completely obsessed with perfection. Now, as far as we know, Taylor Swift is not a serial killer. So what turns a psychopath into a serial killer? Psychologists have speculated that being a psychopath is a genetic condition, it's something that we're born with, whereas becoming a serial killer is a product of nature and our environment. Let's look at the evidence. A Minnesota twin study found that psychopathy is around 60% heritable, which means that in a set of twins, if one twin is a psychopath, there's a 60% chance that the other twin will also be a psychopath. But even more interesting than that, studies with the brain show that being a psychopath may be caused by anatomical differences in our brain itself. Research with criminals found decreased connectivity between the amygdala, the part of our brain that processes negative stimuli, and the ventral medial prefrontal cortex, the part of our brain that interprets what's coming from the amygdala. When connectivity between these two parts of the brain is low, it means that a negative stimuli, such as watching a car crash, is unlikely to translate into any negative emotions, which means psychopaths can see horrible things and feel nothing. Psychopaths don't feel embarrassed when they're caught doing something wrong. They don't feel sad when they see someone else being hurt. And even though they do feel physical pain, they don't feel emotional pain that often comes along with it. Now that means that psychopaths are predisposed to becoming something like a serial killer because they don't feel any negative emotions when they do bad things, but they don't always become a serial killer. It takes negative things in their environment like abuse or neglect as a child to turn a psychopath into a serial killer. Often serial killers have had a traumatic childhood where they have no control over their environment and as adults they turn to violence to exercise control over others. So whilst not all psychopaths are serial killers and not all serial killers are psychopaths, there definitely seems to be a link between the two. And given that 1% of the population are psychopaths, it's highly likely that you know someone who is a psychopath or you are one yourself. Happy Halloween, guys. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching SciQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.